I'm fairly confident you know what the stack is, but just to make things clear, I'm going to make a little bit of a push. The stack is a part of contiguous memory, one of the two ends of which is called the top, while the other one is called the base. There are only two operations we can do with the stack. We can push some value on top of the stack, and pop, which means get and remove, some value from the top of the stack. Push. There is a classic analogy with a pile of dishes. One can insert or remove a dish only on and from the top, at least without risking to break them. I'm sure enough one could easily remove a dish from the middle or even pop. Let's try to write some program that uses the stack. I'm sure you will immediately understand why it's useful. So first things first, we want to initialize our stack. This is done by setting a pointer to the base of the stack and one to the top. We can do so by setting two special registers, the base pointer BP and the stack pointer SP. We can set the base to hex 8000 for now, and we can use the same value for the top, as the stack is now empty. Let's set BH to whatever value we like and push it on the stack, using the instruction push BX. We can now modify BH and print its value. Alright, nothing special yet. It just prints the last character we set bh to, but if we use the command pop bx and try to print again, now we should print the previous value of bh, the one it had before we pushed it on the stack. I suppose you see when we could use this. Suppose that, say, the value of the register ax is very important and you don't want to lose it, but you need to execute a procedure that is going to change it. One thing you could do is push it on the stack, do your thing and retrieve the value later. A couple of very useful instructions are push a and pop A that push and pop these eight registers. Let's now imagine this scenario. Our program is doing something, probably something remarkable and exciting like, say, printing a string, I guess. To do so, it has to set some registers. Suddenly our program has to execute a procedure, so it pushes the registers not to lose their values, jumps to the procedure, does its thing, gets back home, pops the values and goes on with the program. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Sounds a bit like how functions work, right? A function is a part of the program that can be called, and at the end of which we can return to the execution of the instructions following the call. Luckily, that mess is not the only way to implement functions. We could rewrite that code by simply substituting the jump with call and the return with ret. The stack is going to be handled automatically. You might have noticed that the structure of this video is itself based on push and pop. In the description you'll find a link to the brilliant piece of literature that gave me this idea. Pop. As promised in the previous video, we're now going to introduce segmentation. In real mode we're working with 16-bit addressing, and we can only reference memory locations up to 2 to the 16th, or 65,536 bytes, which is 64 kibibytes. That's not a lot, and we would really like to be able to reach a larger part of the memory. For this reason we introduce segmentation. Segmentation divides the memory into segments, each up to 64 kibibytes long, so that we can reference the whole segment. The segments we care about are the data segment, the code segment and the stack segment. For each of these we have a segment register. DS is the register associated with the data segment, and for the other two we have CS and SS. There is also an extra register that we will use in the next video, but for now it's not necessary to talk about it. Of course the physical address of a memory location inside one of these segments can be well above our addressing limit of 64 kibibytes, and this is where the segment registers come into play. To represent a memory location in, for example, the data segment, we use a combination of the value of the data segment register and a 16-bit offset value. In particular, the absolute address of a memory cell in the data segment is equal to ds times 16 plus the offset. This operation is represented with this notation. Both of the values we're using to calculate the physical address are 16 bits long, and at the same time the part of memory we can reach rises by 16 times, becoming a bit more than a megabyte. So that's the solution to our initial problem. One thing you might be thinking is, why do the data, code and stack segments have these names? 
Well, as I briefly noted in the previous video, it is sometimes very convenient to separate data and code, so we might want to put them in different segments. It should not surprise you that instructions are in the code segment, data is in the data segment, and the stack is well in the stack segment. Most operations we encountered already did in fact hide the presence of segmentation. Remember when we printed a string? We had a pointer to the first character of the string. Since a string is data, the pointer was not variable name, but ds offsetted by variable name. The thing is, ds was zero, so the address really was just variable name. Also, remember we had to set the origin of the memory addressing to 7c00? Well, turns out that another way to offset the memory by 7c00 is to set ds to hex 7c0, since hex 7c0 times 16 is in fact hex 7c00. Also, as you might imagine by now, when we were using the stack, the actual address of the base pointer was not simply bp, but rather ss offset by bp. Considering how little time we're going to spend in real mode, what I've done, and what many others have done in their ToyOS projects, is to use the so-called tiny memory model, in which we set all three registers to zero. We will talk about segmentation again a couple of videos from now, just before starting to write our kernel. For now, I'm leaving you another couple of exercises. Try and write a function that prints a decimal integer number and use it to print a value of bx. Implement the exercise from the last video using the stack. Make a procedure that memorizes an input string, terminated by pressing the Enter key, and prints it out. The right way around.